On September 20th, 4 million people hit the streets around the world to raise their voices about the climate emergency. This was twice as big as any previous climate action. I'm Jason Jay, director of the MIT Sloan Sustainability Initiative. But that morning, I got to tell you, I was dragging my heels. I had a full inbox, a lot on my plate to go marching around. Um, but then I started getting the news reports of people coming out in force in Australia, Germany, here in London. And I thought, I've got to support the next generation. My nine-year-old son was just opening his eyes. And I went to him and I said, Vikram, I'm going to go do this climate march thing. It's going to be hot. It's going to be crowded. A lot of walking. But if you want, you can join me. And he sat up with a bit more zing than I usually see on a school morning <laughs> and said, Dad, what do you think? This is the poster he made with a group of grad students at MIT in Building 9. This is us with a few thousand of our friends at Boston City Hall and our team at the MIT Sloan Sustainability Initiative. What I heard that day beneath the signs and slogans and the speeches by Greta Thunberg and all the Gretas and the cities that came out was a simple message. Let's get real. The Paris Accord was a global attempt to get real. 195 countries made a shared commitment to reduce emissions and limit global warming to 2 degrees Celsius, ideally 1.5. That would be a lot safer world than the 4.1 degrees we'll see under business as usual. But we've got two problems. The first is we ran the computer simulations on the actual commitments by countries in the context of Paris, and they only add up to 3.3 degrees. We've got to do a lot better. Now, in the US, we have another problem. <laughs> but we need a global political consensus about the urgency to act and to do it right. Business strategy, public policy, capital investment, we have to get them all on board. Now, here's the trick. The research shows that just showing people research doesn't work. But give people the tools to learn for themselves, and that's when things get real. That's why MIT Sloan professor John Sturman and our team of alumni at, at Climate Interactive developed En-ROADS. En-ROADS stands for Energy Rapid Overview and Decision Support Tool. It runs 38,000 equations instantly using the best peer-reviewed science from an ordinary web browser. And it has a pretty great array of climate levers to pull, everyone's favorite climate strategies. And instantly, you can see the results of your actions and their impact on our energy use, the mix of coal, oil, gas, renewables, and other energy sources, what that does to greenhouse gas emissions, and ultimately to temperature. With this tool, we can sit down with decision makers and explore climate strategies. So let's take Bill Gates, for example. He was a fan of advanced fusion and fission energy generation, saw it as a kind of silver bullet for solving climate change. What happens if we get a breakthrough or a huge breakthrough in advanced energy generation, zero carbon, cheaper than coal? The tool helped Gates and his team see that these new energy sources add an important part of the mix, but they take a long time to ramp up and they do not automatically substitute for fossil fuels. So spoiler alert, there is no silver bullet. There's no one solution, no one technology or policy that saves the day. But there is silver buckshot. <laughs> Blends of different strategies that when we combine them, they get us where we want to go. Like this. Charge a price on carbon pollution. Use energy much more efficiently across the economy. Electrify transportation and heating. Eat and farm more wisely to reduce methane and nitrous oxide. Store carbon in the soils and in forests, both old and new, and that could get us to 1.5 degrees. And that's just one example scenario. En-ROADS makes the case for the ambitious, coordinated action that we need. If we get it into the hands of decision makers. So far, we've done workshops with 35 US senators, seven US governors, 80 House staffers and members across the aisle. 
Last month, I went to Asia. It was incredible. In Indonesia, I ran a workshop with 110 people on a Tuesday. On Wednesday, I trained 10 people of those to be facilitators. On Thursday, one of them translated our materials into Bahasa Indonesian, and on Friday, he had run a workshop with influencers across his country. We've used this tool with corporations, private investors, business families, government agencies, high school teachers, and of course, hundreds of MIT students. It's helping us change the conversation in fundamental ways. We're even getting endorsements from unusual places like a Republican congressman. <laughs> and now we need your help to get more. Take a look around, to look around the room. We need people like us to get people like us on board. Because get this, almost every policymaker and executive that we have reached with this tool has been through an MIT alum. Someone who has opened doors, made calls, championed the work. Our community has incredible reach, but we have to use it. So let's get real. Who can you put us in the room with? And who among you can join us in bringing this tool out into the world? I want you to take out your phone, open your camera, point it at this QR code. A URL will pop up, tap it, and sign up to do three things. The first is load the simulation on our laptop, on, on a laptop, and just play. Learn for yourself. Number two, Get trained to facilitate workshops with your community and your industry. We want to train 7,000 facilitators, one for every million people on the planet. And number three, let us know about decision makers that you can help us reach with these simulation tools. Because this is what MIT stands for. Rigor, discipline, innovation, real action. That's how we make a better world.